Photogrammetry can be a great tool for capturing 3D content. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use Substance Painter to specifically enhance the material. I'm going to be creating a snow material and we're going to add this to our scan. So let's jump in and check it out. I'm going to start with a new document and for my document resolution, I'm going to set this to 4K and for the file, I'm going to come over to my tree stump and I have this asset that I scanned using Substance 3D Sampler's new 3D capture capabilities. Now at the recording of this video, the 3D capture is not available just yet, but I will have a new tutorial ready to go when this feature goes live. But for now, I'm just using the stump USD file that you can export and we'll click open. Using the new USD import in Substance Painter 8.3, I have this subdivision setting. Now, because this is a scan, it's very dense. I don't actually need to set this. And I've already done the UVs through Substance Sampler. So make sure that auto unwrap is disabled and let's click OK. Substance Painter is now going to build the project. And here you can see that scanned mesh that I want to work with. Now I need to import the material. So I'm gonna come over here to file and choose import resource, add my resource. And here you can see that I have this SBS AR file. Now this is also exported from Substance Sampler when you use the new 3D capture. So I'm just going to select stump. Let's click open. It's going to save it as a base material and I'm going to import this right into my project. Click import and now I have my stump material. I can just simply drag and drop it here onto the mesh to apply all of the textures that are coming from that scan. And so here is my scan. I'm pretty excited about this feature and like I said, I'm going to cover this a lot in future videos. One of the really cool things about this is that, you know, I have my base texture, but using the capabilities within Substance Sampler, I'm able to use the image to material functionality to go ahead and generate for me maps such as my roughness and my normal information, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so now I'm ready to get started. Enhancing this scan by creating new materials and blending materials, painting, whatever I need to do here in Substance Painter. The first thing I'm going to do is jump over here to my texture set settings and I'm going to add an ambient occlusion channel. I think it's getting cut off a little bit there in the screen capture, but I've added an ambient occlusion channel and I am going to jump in and do some baking here. So let's go into the bake mesh maps. What you're seeing here is the new baker system that is again found in 8.3. All right, so for my common settings, let's set this here. I'm going to go to 4096 for my bake. I do not need a normal. I was able to generate that normal right from Substance Sampler, which is pretty nice. So world space, I want that. No ID. I do need ambient occlusion. I'm going to bump this all the way up. My secondary rays pretty high. I like to do this just to enhance uh, the overall quality here, get the best quality I can. Same thing with my curvature. Let's jump those uh, secondary rays up to 256. I am going to bake uh, position, leaving the default settings here, which is going to be all axis. And the normalization type is set to be sphere with full scene. Now, I don't need my thickness. OK, so these are going to be my core bakes I need to do. So let's jump over here and bake my selected texture sets. You can see that Painter is going to run through this here pretty quick. Things are looking good. And once we get this finished here, we are then going to be able to start creating my material. OK, so it's done. Uh, we can return back to our painting mode. And now we have the bakes that we need. You can see they're placed here in my texture set settings. So now I'm going to jump over here to my actual layer stack where I have my stump. I have a single texture set or single material for this 3D scan. The 3D capture mode in Substance Sampler is pretty powerful because it allows me to do some mesh processing. I was able to go in and do a decimation as well as rework the UVs. So if we take a quick look here at my 3D 2D split, you can see here is what my UVs look like for this 4K scan. Again, I was able to recreate these UVs directly from Sampler. And so we have this single material that we're going to be working with. So before I get into creating my snow material, I may want to jump into the actual maps for the skin and address any issues I have. So for example, if we jump over here into, let's say, my ambient occlusion channel, I have the ambient occlusion information that's coming here from this substance material, again, exported from Substance Sampler. However, once I get into using generators later on, I want to combine this channel information with the actual bake information that I did earlier. That's precisely why 
in the start, I created this ambient occlusion channel. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we're gonna work through our ambient occlusion. So first thing, we're gonna create a fill layer and I'm just gonna call this AO and I'm just going to have this AO channel enabled. I'll jump over here to my uniform color button and I'm doing a search here for AO and I can see I have my AO bake. That's the actual mesh map, uh, excuse me, the occlusion map from mesh bake. So we're gonna use this. And now you can see here, if we jump over again to my texture set settings, because the ambient occlusion mixing is set to multiply, we're now combining those two maps together. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because now I have this layer here in my stack that lets me have this ambient occlusion data, which is a combination of the bake itself and any information I'm adding to AO in my layer stack. That's great because later when I use generators, I want to use this full capture of my ambient occlusion. So what I'll do is come over here to my effects and I'm going to use an anchor point for this information. Now, one of the things I'm seeing right off the bat, though, is if I zoom in, oh, I have some bake errors here. So if we look at just the ambient occlusion bake map itself, you can see that that's the bake from the mesh. We lost a lot of that detail again that I was able to get in Substance Sampler using image to material. But now just looking at the raw bake, I have some problems here. So let me show you how we can fix this. So the next thing I want to do is create a paintable layer and I call it fix. Now, what we're going to do is use our clone tool. So I want to set all the blending modes to pass through. So if I right click on the layer, we have our option here for blending modes. Now, first, I like to just set the first blending mode. So it's set to base color. Let's just click our drop down here and set this to pass through. And then we right click the layer, choose blending options, and then apply blending mode to all channels. So now every channel, if I jump over to ambient occlusion, has pass through set. Okay, so now that we have this in place, what I can do is come over here with the layer selected. I'm going to come over to, uh, right now I'm just looking at my bake maps. I don't want to do that. I want to look at the channel, my ambient occlusion channel information. Uh, now, because I have this fixed layer using pass-through, I can actually paint on this. So what I'm going to do, I have my clone tool enabled, and I can hit V to just sample an area. And here I have this little bake error. So let me just paint this right out. Yep, and you can see I made a mistake because I wasn't paying attention to the channel that I'm working on. So let me just undo that, right click, and you have your channels. Now the reason why I set this to pass through for all channels is because this fix layer, I may want to use this to fix other issues. Maybe there is an issue in the color map or the normal or something like that that I want to address. I can do so by just enabling the channel I want to paint on. So in my case here, it's going to be ambient occlusion. I don't need to mess with the color, so I'm just going to turn that off. And now, once again, I'll hold V to sample an area, and then I'll paint, and you can see I can just clone out this mistake. So any of these issues that I have. So I'll go through the process here and just fix my bake. This technique is also really good for fixing distortion areas. So here I can see because of just the way the UVs were done uh, inside Sampler, I have some distortion. I, I'm also getting this bake error, but no problem because I can go in here and I can just fix that distortion by just painting this. So this, like I said, this is a great method for going in and being able to tweak and fix and change any issues that you have in your bake maps. And going back to my layer stack, looks like I made a little mistake. I put the anchor point on this first layer and, you know, actually want to make sure that I'm anchoring the data that I fixed. So let's just remove that anchor point and let's add an anchor point here for fix. And we'll just call this um, scan fix. So now we have this data as an anchor point and we can use it anywhere else in our layer stack, like in generators and things like that. And we know that I'm going to have this uh, any of the issues fixed here. So now we're going to take a look at adding the snow. So let's start by creating here a folder. I'm going to call this snow and then I'm just going to create a fill layer and I'm going to call this base. Now on this base layer, you can see that I have things like uh, height and normal enabled. And what I want to do is have the height and normal channel overwrite any of the scan information below it. So since I placed this into a folder group, what I'm going to do is just copy my blending mode to all the channels. So here I have my base color set. I can see it set to normal. So I'm going to right click and choose blending options, apply blending mode to all channels. And this is going to give me the start here of my actual snow. 
Now, one thing that I am seeing here is it, it appears that the correction that I did for my ambient occlusion is starting to come back here into the mix. Like, why is this showing up here once again? Well, because I've actually gone through and fixed this issue here in the layer stack, and I know that this is going to now be a combination of my baked information as well as the ambient inclusion information coming from my substance material, what I can do at this point is just jump over to my texture settings once more. And now what I need to do is just turn off this ambient occlusion mixing. I need to switch this from multiply to replace. So once I've done that, if we go back and enable the snow, you can see that uh, that error is now fixed. But if we go back to our single channel and look at that ambient occlusion information, let's turn off our snow, you can see that here I have both the combination of the AO from the material as well as the bake. Okay, so with that said, let's get back here to our snow and you can see that I'm completely overriding that ambient occlusion here in the snow layer for now, which is good. So here, let's go to this base. This kind of represents the overall base material. And I want to create a, a pretty rough uh, surface at this point. So let me set it to something around 0.8 or so for now. And we'll get back to this. Now, for the base color, I definitely don't want to use pure white. In physically based rendering, we never have an absolute white or an absolute black value in our texture map. So you can see here, I'm using just this kind of off-white value. The default's pretty good, so I'll go with that. Okay, so now I'm going to create another layer on top of this, and we're going to call this uh, Detail. And this is just going to add some height information here. So I'm going to Alt, left click on my height channel, so I just exposed that information. And I'm going to give it just a little bit of a height value to start. Now, what I like to do is set my height as a slider and then mask in some information. And that basically gives me a little bit of a procedural control here for this height. So with this layer selected, I'm going to create a black mask. I need to add a fill. And then from here in my library, if I do a quick search here for a fractal, you can see there is a fractal sum base noise. This is pretty good. I'm going to go with this guy. So we'll, we'll plug this into the grayscale input. And now you can see we're starting to get a little bit of detail into the snow. I'm going to jump over to my fill setting and set this here to be a triplanar and then I might tile this noise maybe a value of two and that looks pretty good so now we're starting to get just some nice detail here for that snow starting to look a little bit more like snow all right uh, and like I said now I have this procedural control so I can dial this up and down so if I want to just increase this value a little bit more I can do so just by changing the slider I love being able to create my materials this way like I said it gives me this little controller so let me uh, set the value around 0.54. And with that, I'm going to come over to my mask and add another layer on top of this. So I'll add another fill. And this time, I'm going to do a search for, I like to use this one a lot, Clouds 2. So I'm going to left click, drag and drop, and place this into the grayscale input as well. So now we have Clouds 2. We want to set the projection to triplanar right off the bat. And then I'm going to tile this, uh, let's see, let's just try a couple values here. So we have something like, say, four, maybe six. And that might be too much, but let's, let's, try, let's try three. Okay, let's see what this is going to do. So here in clouds, uh, what I want to do is come back here to my setting, and I need to set this to something like, say, multiply. So we're going to multiply this and then start to play around in here with this balance setting. Actually, I'm going to change this blending mode to max lighten instead. That's actually going to combine the two maps together. And then again, another quick tweak here to that balance. And you can see that uh, now I really like the effect that I'm getting here. So we have some detail and then we get what appears to look like some snow buildup here in this corner. So I think this is going to work uh, just to give me a little bit of um, some detail here. And I can just, like I said, play around with this as much as I want. But uh, that looks pretty good. Okay, so with that said, we have our detail layer. Now, the next thing we're going to do is add one more layer, and this is going to be my roughness information. Alt, left click on the roughness channel. And now what I'm going to do is uh, inside the roughness channel, instead of creating a mask, I'm just going to add a map right here into the roughness input. And there is a nice map that I like to use. Let's see, this guy is called Gradient. Uh, it's this one here, Gradient Flakes. So this is, uh, this is pretty good. This is going to be perfect for these little snowflake glints that I want to get. So let's grab this uh, image, drag and drop it here to the roughness input. And now in my drop down here, I'm just going to hit C on the keyboard to cycle through my channels. 
and let's go to roughness. So this is my roughness information, way too large to start. So let's set this to triplanar and maybe set this to a value of say four, it looks pretty good. And I also have some controls here for like my pattern, uh, X and Y amount, I can play with that. On my triplanar, uh, let's see here, hardness, I can play with this value. Let's just increase that hardness value. I was getting a little bit of blurring and I don't really want that. So I'm just gonna increase the hardness. And now coming back down to this layer, if we take a look at the pattern masking, this will be good. So this is just going to uh, mask a few of these shapes. And then I have this range value and I can just increase this all the way up. So that is going to give me this roughness information. However, what I want to do is change the blending mode for the rough channel itself. So in my drop down, I'm going to target my roughness channel information. And then here for normal, my blending mode, I'm going to switch this to subtract. So let's just set this to the subtract option. And now you can see that I'm combining that base in this base layer, that base roughness information with this new uh, roughness. Again, that kind of snowflake glint uh, that I'm going for. So let's hit M on the keyboard to go back to my material mode. So now when we take a look, you can see that because of that roughness map that we added, we're getting these nice little specular flakes here, which really helps to sell this overall snow material. And so now if I go in and just kind of move my light around again, you can see how that roughness map is affecting the overall lighting. So that's going to complete this basic snow material. So with just a few layers, you can see that we can get a nice snow because I placed everything into this folder, grouping all the layers. We can always right click and save this as a smart material so that I can use that in other projects. So now I need to create a mask for my snow layer. I'm going to create a black mask. Let's add a generator. And for the generator, I'm gonna choose the ambient occlusion generator and start to play around with the parameters. So let's increase this contrast setting. And now I have this global balance and this is giving me the exact effect that I want. I have this effect of snow building up on top of the surface. And I can use this global balance slider as a parameter that I can use to kind of dial this effect up and down. So pretty Pretty cool. This is exactly what I'm kind of looking for here. Now, one of the things that I want to do here in this case is this particular generator is using my image input for the ambient occlusion that's coming straight from the bake. However, as you recall earlier, we were able to use a combination of the ambient occlusion coming from this stump material and combining that with the bake. And then I was able to, you know, fix a couple of the issues. However, in the layer stack is where I have this combined ambient occlusion. And I want to use that. And that is particularly why I went and anchored that information. So what I can do is come over here to ambient occlusion. Let's go to anchor points and then choose this scan fix. So now that I've done that, I just need to tell the system what channel I'm trying to reference from this layer. And in the drop down, we're going to choose ambient occlusion. So now that I have that in place, you'll notice that we get uh, a little bit more detail. And this is going to be pretty good. This is what I'm kind of looking for. However, I feel like it might be just a little bit too noisy in my case. So one of the things that I can do is come back here to this stump layer, which is that stump material. Uh, from that SBSAR, and I can just blur the ambient occlusion information. So to do that, we are going to add a filter. Let's add a blur. And then I'm going to enable just the ambient occlusion information and then set a value. So let me do something pretty small like uh, 0.125. So I'm, I'm getting just some of the information, just kind of breaking things up, but it's, it's not, you know, here it is. It's a little too noisy, but maybe we just dial this, you know, blur that slightly here. So like I said, I'll just leave it at this 0.11. Okay, so that is going to take care of that first layer of masking. So the next thing I want to do, though, is I want to break this into kind of zones. Like I want to have like some buildup of snow on the ground and have a little bit of a different buildup here on the top. So let's think about this first layer. And what I'm going to do is come over to my masks, let's uh, my effects, and let's add another generator. And this time I am going to add the position generator. So we'll grab this position generator and here let's alt left click the mask so we can see what's happening. In this case, I'm going to increase my contrast quite a bit and I'm going to enable the invert. So now we have the mask basically targeting the ground coverage or the ground area. And now you can see that I can kind of play around with this a little bit. So that is what we're gonna do here with this position. 
Okay, so, and we may go in and play with this a little bit more once we get it dialed in. But for now, this is kind of the base I want to work with. And then I'm going to set the blending mode to multiply. And then let's hit M on the keyboard to go back to our material. And so now you can see that uh, this is what we get. Okay, so now it's just a matter of playing around with things. So I'm going to increase my buildup and my overall kind of contrast here. So get something like that. And I have a little bit of this fall off. Uh, it's, it's, it's too uniform. It's not really the exact effect that I want. So I'm going to show you something kind of cool about this position generator. So here there's an option to use a texture. So I'm going to enable this option. And then we have the ability to search for a texture input. And if I go in here, I think I'm going to use this Clouds 2 again. Like I said, I use this a lot. So let's just drag and drop Clouds 2 into the texture input. You'll notice that nothing happened. And that's because under the texture options, I need to increase the texture opacity. So now, as you can see, as I start to increase this texture opacity, it is starting to kind of break things up a bit. And now it's just a matter of going in. See, I can adjust my scale. And now it's a matter of going in and just trying to get this uh, in, in, inside of, you know, some parameters adjusted the way that I want here. So I've, I'm breaking this up. I can go back here to the overall global balance and just kind of push this upwards now. Just over crank it a little bit because we're now breaking this kind of snow layer up with this texture input. Super powerful way to work with this tool. I use it quite a bit. So here, let's increase our contrast. Maybe, and maybe now I can play with the scale a little bit. Let's see. Eh, I don't think so. Let's just leave it back uh, at this value. I had 1.14. Look, looks pretty good. So with just that little bit of a change, we now get a little bit more of a variation here in that overall kind of fall off. And, and I like that. That looks pretty good. And I think that's going to cover kind of my base ground here. So now let's take a look at the top. So what I'm going to do is just select this layer. Uh, control D, we'll just duplicate it, and here, we'll call this Snow Top. And let's just go through and make changes again here. So if we turn off the position slider, we have just that ambient occlusion. So that looks pretty good already. And now we have our position. Let's come over to the position slider, and this time let's turn off the global invert. So we don't want to do that. And now we have the snow on the top, and let's just see, it should be hopefully just a matter of me going in and just playing around with the global balance. So let's see what I can get with this. So we can go in and, and play with that contrast. So not too much, just enough. And let's just see what we can do here. So that's looking kind of interesting here. And again, we're using that texture input to help drive some of these settings. Let's see what we can do with the overall pattern. So if I adjust the, the scale of the noise, what does that do? So you can see, yeah, that's just breaking things up. We can play with the disorder a little bit if we want to just try to get that to break up a little bit uh, in a different way just by changing that disorder. Uh, we have our balance, of course, so we can play with that. Yeah, that looks pretty interesting. So let's go with something like that. Okay, so there we go. We have the snow kind of falling on the top and coming down the side here a little bit. Looks kind of interesting. And so with this in place, we now pretty much just have our snow scene. And like I said, it's always a matter of going in and just kind of tweaking things. So I could play around with this kind of contrast. I can play with the overall kind of balance here. It's something like that. And then again, it's about playing with this, uh, this balance setting here. Even if I want to just push this up and down. Let's see, maybe what I want to do is just something that looks a little bit more like that. Okay, so that, yeah, I like it just a little bit more off center. So it's not covering the entire top, just a little bit over here on this side. And then, of course, uh, once we kind of get this brought into position here, uh, let's see, we can play with that, that overall kind of contrast. But if we have an issue of something like we don't like, like maybe I don't like this little snow here, no problem. We can always just grab a paint and go in and just kind of paint this out. So I'll hit the X key to invert uh, my paint value. And then, look, I can go and just paint that out. So let's say I didn't like that. Or at this point now, we've kind of driven this procedurally I could just go in and start just kind of painting in additional details to this anywhere I want. So if I wanted to like put some snow around the corners or, you know, anything you want. Of course, you wouldn't just use a, a round brush. We would, you know, use a brush that has a little bit uh, more of a grunge map to it. But overall, this is going to take care of my little scene here and what I want to work with. So at this point, we have our snow, but it doesn't quite look like snow. And to fix that, we are going to add some subsurface scattering. 
So first thing I'm going to do is jump over to my texture set settings and in my channels, I am going to add a scattering channel. So now I have this scattering channel. Let's jump back over to our layers and I am going to add a new fill layer. And at the top here, I will just call this scattering. And for the material, I'm going to enable only the scattering channel. And now I have this slider, which lets me just dial in some scattering information. So if I set this to a value of one, you'll notice that nothing is actually happening. So what we need to do is check our shader. And by default, I do believe that subsurface scattering is enabled. So what you need to do is jump over to your display settings and you need to activate subsurface scattering in the display. So once I turn that on, now you can see that we are getting this subsurface scattering effect. And we can increase the sample count if we like, if you see a lot of noise here. So I might just bump this up a little bit. Okay, so now that it's on and I can see it, the next thing I need to do is maybe take a look at my actual scale value. So here it's just set to this default 0.5. So I'm going to just decrease the scale value. And let's set it to something around maybe 0.04. Okay, so just, you know, zooming around, taking a look at the object. Uh, well, actually, let me take a look at this. I think actually setting this to 0 0.01 will be correct. So now we're starting to actually see what looks like snow here in Substance Painter. So this is really starting to come together and, and look a lot more like snow. Now, we, like I said, we have our scattering channel and, and we can decrease or increase this value here to change the intensity value of this scattering effect. Now, I only want this scattering to affect the snow area. So what I'm going to do in this case is come over to my scattering layer. Let's create a black mask. And then I am going to create a fill. Now, I need to be able to reference some type of mask that represents my snow. And to do that, we can just jump back to our snow layers. So for example here, if I just alt left click on snow top, that's going to give me this exact mask that I want. And so notice here that I'm choosing or I'm viewing the mask that's part of my layer group. So with that in place, all I need to do here is just add an anchor point at the top. So that's my snow top mask. And that's going to work for what I need. Let's do the same thing for snow. So if we go to our snow layer group, you can see in the layer mask, that is the mask for the bottom or the ground cover area. Perfect for what I need. So let's add an effect and an anchor point here as well. So now I have my two masks. Then we can just simply come over here to my fill. Let's come to the grayscale input, anchor points, and let's grab our snow mask. I'm going to hit control D to duplicate that and then do the same thing. Let's grab snow top mask. So now that I have these two masks, I can simply just come over here and add or set this to la max lighten. And now I have built in my scattering mask, the mask that I need. So if I hit M on the keyboard to go back to my material mode, now we have subsurface that's, that is now affecting just my snow layer. And again, if we get in really close, you can see the overall effect of what I have here. It looks really, really good. Now at this point too, I could jump over here to my display settings. I'll activate my temporal anti-aliasing. And let's see, where are my shadows? Up here towards the top, I can enable my shadows if I want to kind of help view this in the 3D view. And here is my scene with my snow. This is all ready to be exported. You can export your maps for rendering in any 3D program, or you can just send this right into Stager if you're using Stager for your rendering. And here you can see a final render that was done using Substance Stager, and then I added some post effects and color grading in Photoshop. So that'll conclude this video on using Substance Painter to create a custom snow material to enhance our 3D capture. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.